What's up, you guys? Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. In this section, we will be learning Queen's Rule. Now, thankfully, I, f I was able to get my background to be uh, gray, or at least a darker color, so that our eyes don't hurt. <laughs> um, I finally figured it out. So whenever I do like Control Alt, not Control, um, select all and then delete it'll stay gray forever so uh, for now on to save our eyes we will be using a darker background so what is queen's rule so queen's rule is same thing as king's rule except that it uses uh, trig identities so here are the trig identities that we are going to use that's not a pencil pi over 2 minus x this is equal to cosine of x and then cosine pi over 2 minus x is equal to sine of x okay now the reason why we need to know these trig identities is because we will go we will be dealing with integrals like this where we have zero from zero to pi over two and you have some function sine of x plus some other function or maybe the same function I don't know but something like this right then what's gonna happen is when we do King's rule pi over two minus x Right, when we do king's rule, what this does is, oh, oops. It switches, it alternates cosine and sine. So what you're doing is you're literally converting all sine of x into cosine of x and cosine of x into sine of x. And this is done by pi over 2 minus x. This is Queen's rule. And I'll, I'll show you why this is such an amazing technique, uh, starting with our first integral example. So here's our first example. This is the most common integral that you'll ever uh, see in integration bees. And if, if you've never seen this before, um, if you tried solving this, uh, by hand you will it's it's not integrable the function is it's it's non-elementary so it, it would be very difficult to solve it but with Queen's rule we can literally solve this in like seconds so here I see we have 0 pi over 2 okay so then let's try pi over 2 minus x so my suspicion here is that we have 0 pi over 2 and the fact that we have sines and cosines, right? So using Queen's rule, pi over 2 minus x, what this does is this gives me the balance going to stay the same because we've, we've seen that in King's rule, right? But here, now, by trig identities, uh, sines becomes cosines and cosines become sines. And so now we have cosine to the power of 4 cosine to the power of 4 plus sine to the power of 4 right now what do we always do in King's rule in King's rule we like to add up two different forms of the same integral right we call this I and so 2I is equal to is from 0 to pi over 2 and let me go ahead and abbreviate this this is sine 4 sine 4 plus cosine 4 and then we add this right cosine 4 cosine 4 plus sine 4 oh what does this look like if you add this up together they're both the same denominator this they all cancel out this is just one it's just 1 dx and so what we have is 2i 
equals pi over 2. Thus, this whole integral is equal to pi over 4. And that is the Queen's rule. Okay? Let's do some more examples. So we have this integral here. 1 plus tangent cubed. Do we factor that? No, we don't. We do not factor that. Please do not factor that. That would be horrid. Um, but how do we solve this integral? So, hmm. How do we deal with this? A tangent at the bottom. Well, this is, tangent is sine over cosine. So multiply top and bottom by cosine. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, cosine cubed in, in this case. So cosine cubed. And then we get cosine cube, and multiplying cosine cube here would give us sine cube. Ah, what does this look like? What does this look like? This should look familiar to you, right? It's the same exact process. Uh, you let u equal pi over two minus x, right? And then all that what well, all that happens, all what happens is you just convert cosines to sines, and that's it. So now it's sine cube, right? This is sine cube. The denominator does nothing. It's because, you know, commutative property. So now, because of that, we know that, okay, if we let i equal this integral here, right? Then 2i, this should be an arrow, 2i. I mean, if we add these two up, we already know what it's going to be. It's just going to cancel out. It's just going to cancel each other out. So 0 pi over 2. This is 1 dx. And now we can easily see that this integral is pi over 4. So this integral here is pi over 4 as well. Now go ahead and do this on your own now. Let's see if you can... Uh, use the Queen's rule with this. It's actually the same, it's literally the same concept, right? I let u equal pi over 2 minus x, right? And then all you're getting is just the same bounds because King's rule and all this does is it just converts sines and cosines. That's all this does. And of course, you can easily see that the denominator does not change so when we add these two together, when we add these two integrals together, they just cancel each other out. So we just get 1 dx. And so your whole integral is equal to pi over 4. Now you're probably asking, Silver, why are you giving us integrals that equals to pi over 4? Well, it's because I'm giving you like very common reoccurring integrals. You will literally see this in every integration bit you come across most of the time but uh, yeah no this this is the basic uh, these are the beginner integral these are like these integrals are very uh, introductory to Queen's rule so I just want to show you like uh, at least a good start so but because these are very common and that you will see this in integration bees you know I'm, I'm giving it to you now that you will come across this. So, uh, definitely, uh, you should definitely recognize these um, integrals. Oh, God. Okay. Now, <laughs> so now you're probably thinking, okay, how on earth are we going to use Queen's Rule on this? Huh. That's a good, that's a good question. How are we going to use Queen's Rule on this? So, of course, partial fractions. This looks like partial fractions, right? So if we factor this, we get 1 plus x, 1 plus x squared. Huh. 1 plus x squared, 0 to infinity. Let me show you something cool. We have 1 plus x squared at the bottom, 0 to infinity. Huh. Let me let me show you something very cool. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to do trig sub instead of partial fractions. Let x equal tangent theta. So what's going to happen is we get this from 0, pi over 2. Uh, when dx is equal to secant square theta d theta, it's going to cancel out this. So what we actually end up getting is d theta 1 plus tangent theta because of this. Okay, That 1 plus x squared cancels out the secant square theta. Okay, So now we have this integral. Oh, it's so much easier. So much easier because now look at this. Uh, we do the same technique with the tangent cube, right? This time we just multiply top and bottom by cosine theta. Right? Cosine theta d theta. Sine theta. There we go. You already know what this equals, right? You could you could do the process in your head. Let u equal pi over 2 minus x. You know, it's just going to con convert to cosines and sines. You know, this, you already know that this is equal to pi over 4. Okay? Yes. <laughs> this, this integral also equals to pi over 4. In fact, anything like this, dx, as long as you have 1 plus x squared, then 1 plus x to the power of whatever is going to equal to pi over 4. Okay? Because this is equal to this. Which is also equal to this. It's like sine of x Right. Or or the cosine at the top as well. All right, this this is this is the introductory of Queen's rule. Okay. Pi over four. It's the most common Queen's rule answer. Oh god, what is this? Okay, what what do we even do here? Well let's 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 calm down and just simplify it for a second. Okay, Let's see x minus 1 squared. We have like um, x squared uh, plus x minus 1 squared. And then we have some dx square root 1 minus x. Ha! Huh. Well, this is squared, right? So we can technically have, um, yeah, let me rewrite this. Because it's squared, we could just legally do this. Okay, yes, you could do that. In fact, this would be the correct form because our bounds is from, is between zero and one. Okay, now we can easily see that this is just King's rule. Let u equal 1 minus x. Okay, interesting. So we let u equal 1 minus x. You already know where this goes, right? Let me color this in red, actually. Oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Um, x squared. This does, the bottom doesn't change. This doesn't change. Right, because commutative property. Okay. And now, of course, when we add these two, two integrals together, right, this plus this, it's just going to equal, it's just going to cancel out. So we'll just end up getting 1 minus x from 0 to 1. Okay, now what? Um, how is this Queen's rule, actually? 
Why did I put this in Queen's Rule? I mean, we could just continue, honestly. So, I don't know why I put this in Queen's Rule, but pretty much... I probably accidentally did something like... I used Queen's Rule, but I probably overcomplicated it. But, consider this as a bonus integral then, in that case. Uh, but, pretty much, uh, this... Oh, I'm sorry, no, 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 no. Oh, you do not complete the square. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Huh. Ain't no way. Wow. Well, that was easy. That wasn't really Queen's Rule at all. That was just trick sub. Uh, I'll just add this here in case then. I think I probably did use Queen's Rule and overcomplicated it. But this this solution is much better. How do we use Queen's Rule on this? Let u equal e to the x, just to simplify this, right? Let u e to the x. Then we get 0 here, infinity. We have u here, left over, du. We have u squared plus 1, u plus 1. Ooh. Interesting. However, be careful. Uh, don't just answer it as pi over four, because there's something there's something weird about this integral, and that's because we have a u on top, right? If it was a one, then we could just say it's pi over four, but there's a u right there. So let's let's see. We can use some algebraic manipulation, right? Consider, consider du one plus u square, u u plus one, right? And then do one uh, plus one minus one. Okay, so now we have from zero to infinity. We see that we can have. Uh, oh, so this simplifies to uh, one plus u square at the bottom and then here we have minus minus 1 1 plus u square u plus 1 so now what this means is this is equal to see this is inverse tangent right so with infinity this is just pi over 2 minus pi over 4 Oh, okay. So then, in that case, this is just pi over 4. It just so happens that we just got an integral of pi over 4, right? Maybe if this was like cube or something else, then no, you, it would not be pi over 4 for sure. Uh, you would have to do polynomial division or something weird. Or you might, you might even end up with like an ln of something. So uh, just be very careful, okay? So that was our last integral. Uh, hopefully this video helps you understand how Queen's Rule work. Uh, it's a, this is just the introduction. Uh, this, is, this is just the introduction level for Queen's Rule. So uh, of course there will definitely be other sections. Okay. Uh, where we the other sections is where we start doing some trig manipulation uh, with Queen's Rule, which is going to be uh, a little scary at first, but you'll, you'll get used to it for sure. Okay. Otherwise, you know, the best thing to do, like I always say, replay the video and try the integrals yourself. Okay. All right. I hope this helps. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part.